Hello ladies and gentlemen and a very warm welcome to Evolving Consciousness. It's been some time since I made my last video, but I thought that I didn't conclusively end the series which we started previously on this phenomenal book called The Sane Surfer and the CEO. So here I am to conclude the series which I started a couple of months back on this book The Sane Surfer and the CEO. So if you recollect you would remember that we are talking about this book wherein this main central protagonist is going on a journey and meeting different central characters. He first meets the saint, if he, then he meets the surfer, both of whom instill divine lessons within this person. Those of you who are wondering what I am blabbering all about, I would highly recommend you to please go and watch those videos so that you can make sense of what I am saying in this video. To give a rough recap or to refresh your memory, this is a book by Robin Sharma who is a leadership coach of billionaires of the titans of industry and this book has a storytelling narrative wherein the central character, the central protagonist comes across a letter scripted by his father who is no more living in the plot of the story and the father asks him to go on a journey and meet three different people who are located in three distinct geographical locations. The saint is in Rome and the surfer is in a beachy Maldives, right? So in a location called Maldives. And this person, the last character whose topic, whose main focus of this video is going to be all about is the CEO. Now the CEO is in New York City. Now the central character of this plot is very excited to be on this, in the city of New York because he is supposed to be very fond of it. Now once he goes inside the concrete jungle, he faces, he finds himself amidst a huge building, a very high rise building because the location his dad had told in the letter pointed to that particular venue. Now after he enters that, he sees a person, a woman who is very charismatic, who is in a corporate attire and approaches him saying very well that this person is here to see her. The central character, the protagonist is absolutely captivated and mesmerized by the Cherishman personality of the CEO. And then they start having a formal introduction and they have a casual conversation. And then the CEO starts spelling words of wisdom, wisdom which can make this person a better man, a evolved version of himself. Now I have tried to distill what the CEO is talking all about with the central character in terms of three distinct points which will allow us to understand and learn the very basic learnings the CEO is trying to deliver. If you are someone who really likes to read, I will recommend you to read this book, it's phenomenal. But if you are someone who is trying to get a quick bit, you want to binge watch what are the lessons it is, so this is the video for you. Now coming to the first point the CEO talks about, let's remember the CEO here is a person who is in the corporate culture, who, is, who has established herself as a true titan in the corporate industry. So this is not someone who is going to talk wishy-washy philosophy, but she is a person who is going to offer real pragmatic nuggets of wisdom which is going to be very useful for the day-to-day -day activities of her central character. And this is certainly going to be useful for you and me, people who are in the everyday business. Now let's go to the crux of this video. The first point the CEO makes is the one who gives the most. The one who gives the most succeeds the most. Now this seems very common sense. I mean, this seems very stereotypical. But there are different layers to that. Allow me to take you through that journey. So they talk about a very crucial point about building awareness of how we take choices. And she says that we all are 
no matter where we are in which point of life we are in we all are there because of the kind of choices we have taken in different points of our life whether it is our health situation whether it's a wealth situation or any dimension of our life in general it's only a result of the kind of choices we have made and one thing which i really found profound was building awareness on having a lot of awareness around making daily choices now this daily choices is not about taking choices making major choices about major things in life this can be as simple as whether i would spend my entire vacation binge watching or i would cultivate or develop a particular skill during that vacation time this can be as simple as that the point is that how important it is to have a constant sense of vigilance a constant sense of awareness towards the kind of choices we make and if our choices are well aligned with our goals then we are supposed to be there is no power in the universe which can stop us from being successful in that area seems common sense you say but as i keep saying in my other videos common sense is anything but common these days now let's go to the other musings of what she's talking about so there's a beautiful uh, point about growing right he says every second of every day we are either growing or we are shrinking now think about it now this is so deep if you are able to understand the depth of this line you will be able to appreciate this line every moment of a day we are either growing as a human being or we are shrinking when we are engaging in things which don't serve us we are shrinking but when we are engaging in things which are useful to us in the long run then we are growing growth is the only evidence of life and this point on personal accountability is repeatedly driven in the thought process of the ceo we can either be a victim and blame the world destiny the history the weather or we can take personal accountability for everything which is happening in our life and start making progress now this is not to say that we should be very hard on ourselves and we cannot be self loving to the contrary true self love means that we are engaging in activities which are really useful to us because victims are so easily around as right and victims don't do anything in life they blame some person for the chaos which has happened in their life instead of taking personal accountability instead of saying this very honest thing instead of having the guts and the spine to say that i am responsible for what has happened they easily try to shift the blame to the circumstances to people to the weather the history now this is not to say that we should always blame ourselves for everything the point the ceo is trying to drive is to build personal accountability and remember the more we are accountable to ourselves the more we can be accountable to the world outside the famous quote of the upanishad yat pinde tat brahmande the entire universe is within us and this point of personal accountability is so important even in the corporate culture i am someone who works in the corporate world and i know for a fact be it a person be it a individual contributor as an employee or as a company at large people who have worked in the corporate know the significance of having accountability and this there's a beautiful example which the author in the cloak in the garb of the ceo is trying to put us across a idea he's trying to sell us to he's saying that they visualize this whole accountability business as a bank account and the more you withdraw the cash out of it instead of so trust can be equated to a bank account 
the more you invest on it the more it grows and the more you withdraw it withdraw here means that you're continuously breaking the trust of your customers or your own self you might be saying how am i breaking my own trust let me give you an example Suppose now is the time of the new year and we all have this habit of making new year resolutions only to break them a couple of months later. Suppose you make a resolution or a firm resolve that this is the things I will try to do and for some reason you don't do it. You are falling in your own eyes because there is a trust deficit which you create. Now this is the equation of personal accountability but this accountability is also in the outer world if a company a mama conglomerate has a very good image and they do things which are completely contrary to what they have been doing the customer image will completely tarnish and why do you think the customer or any person will consider them for business they probably will go with their competitors now this looks very simple but accountability personal accountability is the most important trait which you and me can develop and which you and me can learn from this conversation between the ceo and the central protagonist now there's a quote by rudyard kipling which is in the context of rising from victimhood to a hero mindset and i'll quote what rudyard kipling is saying we have 40 million reasons for failure we have 40 million reasons for failure but not a single excuse i mean there's always this mindset of having certain reasons for why we were not able to do something but unless we take accountability take charge of our own life we won't be accountable for it we will always play the victim card and playing the victim card is so easy right there is no fun about it and this is what the author is inviting us to consider the sh shift from being a victim to a hero now coming to another very interesting example is about building this ecosystem this awareness of how I can contribute to whatever field of work I am. Now this can be equated to so many different things. You can think of how you can contribute to your own self when it comes to your mind, body and soul. When it comes to contributing to your company, maybe you can think about how you can add more value. Now I was blessed enough to have a conversation with one of the senior executives, a one-on-one -on -one conversation with one of the senior executives in my company and there is something I asked him about because I was very mesmerized by his fast ascent to the corporate ladder. He is quite young as compared to his peers but he has reached at the peak of a corporate executive level. So I asked him with utter curiosity that I would like to know that what is the reason for your iconic progress for his such a very accelerated growth towards the corporate levels. What is the one reason which has made you achieve success so fast in your career? And he gave me a very breathtaking answer which is going to stay with me and I will invite you to also take home this particular answer which the executive gave to me. He said, always look for difficult problems to solve always look for difficult problems to solve he obviously meant it in the business context and he told me that the more you are able to solve difficult problems with ease and efficiency you will naturally progress in the corporate ladder the problem with most of us is we don't like to have problems we don't like to stay with problems because problems push us out of the comfort zone they create a sense of unease and he said that when you have this habit of staying with your problems, creating a relationship with your problems, solutions are bound to come and he is a person who solved very difficult business problems and as a result of that, the leadership recognized his contributions 
and because of that he was able to grow faster than his peers now this is something which registered in my mind and it is always going to register in my own personal pers career journey right in my own personal career journey this is something which i am going to always recollect the thing which he told me this is so very profound and so very simple but this is something which we all shy away from the ability to solve problems the ability to look out for what are the difficult business problems now you might be a student you might be a person working in some corporate if this one equation you are able to understand and if you try to solve those problems which are difficult success is bound to come to you nothing can stop success from coming to you now let's go to the second key lesson the ceo is talking about now i really like this this very start of this topic they say use love as a business tool and something which is very deeply ingrained in the anatomy of emotions so in a given point of time in any point of time any human being is always bombarded with thoughts i mean if you have a functioning brain you will always have thoughts and in any given point of time you will either have thoughts of fear or thoughts of love if you think about it all the thoughts which are in your brain right now are which you are thinking have the source in these two emotions one is desire another is fear just think about it what did i just say whatever you are thinking right now it is either because you have a desire for that thing or it's because you're scared of something there cannot be any thought which can come out of some other dimension sure there are different manifestations of desire and fear but unless you have desire and you have fear there is always going to be thoughts in your mind and all your thoughts directly or indirectly are connected to this two primitive emotions desire and fear and in any point of time either you can eat, work either you can function through fear or through love there is no third option think about it it's very deep but it's very deep subtle but it is worth realizing and comprehend the point is that most of us in our own personal life we are divorced from our own self now this is a very interesting word right we have normally heard of divorce between two people but he is talking about divorcing from our own self the fact is that we all are victims of self betrayal you might think how is that the case you might artificially proclaim or claim that probably what you are saying doesn't make sense right i love myself a lot i i have a lot of love for myself but i will humbly ask you to consider this narrative let's say that how what do you define as self love okay let's get back to the very basics what do you think is love in general now love is the most abused and misused word in today's day and age our understanding of this four letters is what has been bombarded in the bollywood and hollywood movies recently i heard a very lucid and a simple definition of this emotion now is nothing but utility how useful are you to yourself how useful you are to the other person that is a parameter a yardstick for the love a person has now one might say no 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 this is not love and uh, this is not thing love is deep and everything but let us be very practical at the very practical level this is what love is it's utility it's how useful you are to the other person it's how useful you are to yourself now when you claim that you are high in self love with all humility i would like to ask you this question like to pose a question to you if you are truly in self love that means every habit thought word and action is aligned with things which are useful to your own well being but how many of us honestly can claim to do that very few and those very few people 
who are really in self love they are different individuals they don't have to chase the outside world for me for them to feel good they are always feeling good their cup is always full so they don't act like beggars outside to try to fill their own cup only a beggar will go out begging for attention a person who is fully in fully filled with a lot of self respect and love he doesn't even feel the need to go and indulge in any kind of relationship or he doesn't have a sign of desperation now in the context of corporate culture when we have this kind of a mindset of whatever am i doing is it coming from a place of love or is it coming from a place of fear now how does fear fit into this most of us when we start the corporate culture or corporate journey we always are competitive we always want to put the other person down and rise above him the problem with this mindset is there is always someone above you no matter how big a success you are there is always going to be someone who is going to be better than you it's very commonly said that comparison is the thief of joy and when you are comparing someone whose journey is completely different from your journey you are doing grave injustice to yourself it's like committing violence with your own self because understand this every person is uniquely different and comparing someone with yourself is like having a different yardstick and it is absolutely not fair because understand that person has gone through a different journey probably the challenges that guy has gone through you and me haven't gone through that we had the luxury of comfort while that person didn't have that so there are a lot of equations a lot of parameters in this equation and once we start operating through this lack mindset that i need to defeat that person if that person wins i lose nobody has to lose for you to win nobody has to lose for you to win now this is again a deep concept and it is coming from an abundance mindset when we are deeply programmed through a mindset of lack we believe in snatching but when we are ingrained with this consciousness of abundance we focus on our, our own journey we seldom give attention to what the other person is doing the only thing thing which matters to me is whether i am better than yesterday that is a good yardstick for comparison now this topic is all about that and also one very interesting thing one potent skill which everyone can cultivate is the skill of being an excellent communicator now this is non negotiable being an excellent communicator is an indispensable requirement in the corporate regime and not only in the corporate regime even in the everyday life if one is not an excellent communicator he is bound to be mediocre now most of us think that living a mediocre life is easy there is a parallel narrative which is suggested in this book which i found very intriguing the author says that to be very candid leading a mediocre life drains a lot of energy just like you i was a little taken aback with this narrative but the author explains going forward every time you are betraying yourself you are not working towards your full potential you are draining yourself the greatest pain norman cuisine said it so well when he said death is not the biggest tragedy the tragedy is what dies within us when we are alive and talent unexpressed turns into pain if you are not reaching our full potential we are actually draining ourselves more but we don't understand this we trot off number ourselves we distract ourselves in different kinds of entertainments we sort of try to subdue the pain which we feel through distraction and this is such a hard hitting point which the author has unveiled in front of us the fact is that living a mediocre life is far more draining in the long run versus leading a more 
effectively profound and a fulfilling life a life which realizes our full potential now let's go back to the third and the final point the ceo is talking about in this book the ceo talks about this philosophy this concept of the real way of succeeding now this is a beautiful concept we all have heard of this idea of goal setting have a lot of goals and achieve them but what we fail to acknowledge is the fact that the goal is not the fruit or the reward whether you achieve the goal or not is dependent on n number of factors the real reward is the kind of transformation your personality goes through in trying to chase that goal because the kind of habits are the kind of character you build in trying to achieve that goal that is the true reward hence it's always important to strive for goals but not worry about whether you have achieved that goal or not because in trying to strive for those goals you have become a better personality a better person i hope this narrative i hope this paradigm shift process of how you pursue goal setting in general gives you a lot of motivation and hope to strive for goals but not with the expectation that all your goals will be achieved but with this thought process is underlying belief that i'm striving for the goal not because i have to achieve that of course achieving that goal is super important but even if you don't achieve that goal it made you a better person versus a person who is not doing anything and is not striving for goals now this is a beautiful point author has made another point and now this is huge we live in a world which is mesmerized by social media and we are all chasing self worth in the validation of what others think of us now this is so deeply ingrained that most of us don't even realize our self worth is based on what the other person is thinking about us the fact is that nobody really has the time to think about you everyone is thinking only about themselves now this is harsh and it might sound rude but this is the reality of life even if they are thinking about you probably you are in some way linked to them that's the reason they are thinking about you the fact is everyone is thinking what the other person is thinking so essentially nobody is thinking about you and when you shift this compass from seeking outside validation to working within to having the compass of calibrating your self worth not from outside validation and approval but an honest assessment of your own self like what you were before and what you are now that is the true and a healthy way to develop your self worth not a self worth where you are chasing one goal after another and you are chasing that goal so that others respect you now this is a recipe for bombing your own consciousness with negativity and frustration and there cannot be a better recipe for colossal failure than this sadly we all are in some point of our life infected by this pandemic of validation this is a huge pandemic we think there's a beautiful book which i am recently reading it's a book from uh, it's called mind from mindful to mindful by om swami and there's a chapter in that i'll make a full fledged video on that because i truly believe that book the chapter in particular requires a full blown video in itself but there he talks about the illusion of suffering the biggest problem we all have is we find the other person moving at a faster pace the fact is the other person is all also going through his set of own challenges there is nobody perfect in this world the biggest illusion of suffering is the other person is all okay and i am the person i am the person who the whole world is against this is the biggest illusion so i'll make a full blown video on that but coming to this point on self worth it's very important to have this understanding of self worth not based on outside validation because what the other person perceives of you 
talks a lot about his character and understanding it has nothing to do with what you are because only you know yourself better the other person might have a belief might have a thought process based on his experiences with you but that has nothing to do with your current state and those thought processes and beliefs are subject to a lot of dynamics and it's none of our business to look at what they are thinking we should be only focused on our journey our journey of building self respect and self worth i hope my this video was useful to you and the fact that i made a three video series of this book the saint surfer and ceo for folks who haven't watched those two first parts i'll highly recommend you to watch it and if you really loved this video do don't forget to share this video with your family and friends also give me your candid feedback in the comment section and i'll meet you in the next video thank you so much for your time bye